Good evening. Thank you. I am Keith Brackett, principal of Sacred Heart Catholic High School. Today we are gathered to celebrate the graduating class of 2022. We are honored to welcome our bishop, the most reverend, Louis Kinneman, as the main celebrant of our Eucharistic celebration of Mass. Our pastor, Father Ken Ramon Landry, Father Alwyn Sammy, pastor of Holy Trinity Church and St. Paul Mission, and Father Mark Ropel, pastor of St. Thomas Catholic Church, will be the consultants of today's liturgy. We also welcome Deacon Warren Goff, Dr. Rhonda Clark, Superintendent of Education of the Diocese of Biloxi, Ms. Vicki Flanagan, elementary principal, and all other dignitaries that honor us with their presence today. We also welcome our faculty, staff, parents, relatives, and friends of our graduates. Let us remember that we are in God's presence and we ask God for his blessings. Please turn off your cell phones and refrain from any flash photography or outbursts during this time. Our liturgy tonight is especially suited for this occasion. We sincerely thank you for coming and please join us in prayer and celebration. Please stand as our graduates enter. Please join us in our gathering song, The Summons. I 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Well, it's very good to be with you for this graduation mass, and congratulations to all of our graduates. Uh, uh, we'll talk a little more about that, but to the family members also and friends that are here, congratulations uh, to you. We're together as the body of Christ now, in love of Jesus Christ, and and forming that body, let's acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father of every gift, we confess that all we have and are comes down from you. Teach us to recognize the effects of your boundless care, to love you with a sincere heart and with all our strength, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's listen to God's word. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, I will visit you and fulfill my word to you to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans of well-being and not for calamity. To give you a future of hope. Then you will call upon me and come pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have led you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back. The word of the Lord. Our response will be, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust, do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly unfaithful. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and you I wait all day long. 
To you, O Lord, Lord, I lift up my soul. soul. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and to your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your kindness, O Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, God instructs sinners in his way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his path. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good character, if there is any excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Deacon, may the word of God be on your lips and your heart always worthy. Proclaim the gospel of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and and throw them into a fire where they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you will bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Remain in my love. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. 
if you remain on both microphones, you're going to have a problem. Turn one of them off. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. Gospel of John, Jesus speaking to you, the graduates, but also to all of us gathered here. And that presumes that we have a relationship with him. And so your time here at Sacred Heart has been a time of really embracing these words and letting Jesus be a part of your lives such that you truly remain in him and remain in his word. And that word we just had proclaimed to us wonderfully. I've met with you now, I think, over the last five years, and uh, slowly but surely I've gotten to know some of you, most of you, and of course, uh, the parents will be able to make that relate with this. There's a few of you I've been praying for really hard <laughs> to get to this moment. There's a couple of you that I was almost going to hit you with holy water, even. But you've made it to this moment in your life, and this is both an end and a beginning for you. And so you take what your families have taught you and that what we have taught you here at Sacred Heart to wherever you're going, university, military, work, whatever it is, and you take that with you. And so the words Jesus speaks to us today in the gospel really need to hit home. That as you go off, you are really called to remain in his love. And part of what we were discussing over the years is that your vocation in the end is a call to holiness and love. That's, that's you, to live a life that is filled with the love of Jesus Christ and to let that flow through all that you do and who you are, wherever you go. And that's really the, really the word that needs to be sealed on your hearts, each of you. In a special way, the prayer in the gospel of whatever you want shall be done for you if you are true to him, to Jesus, and letting Jesus walk with you, and letting Jesus guide you, and letting Jesus give you the directions you need. So even if you're reading right now the program, which I do notice, by the way, hi, he's calling you. He's calling you, he's calling you, especially in love to him and to walk with him. Trust me, the world is going to throw more than a program at you guys and girls. The world's going to throw a lot at you. And the stuff that you're going to hear in university will curl my toes. I don't know about yours, okay? And that's why this foundation that you need right now and have celebrating this graduation is truly a moment of faith, a moment of hope, and a moment of love in Jesus Christ. For he calls you to be his disciples. That does mean, as we talked about earlier, you really have grown to know him. You've grown to love him and to experience his love in your lives. And you're going to need it. And you're also grown to serve him and to truly witness to him wherever you go. We are sending you out now, God willing, as disciples. And we hear really in the gospel that that's really the heart and center of our relationship with Jesus Christ. And he says to us, as the Father loves me, so I love you, each of you, and all of us gathered here. Jesus loves us that much. That's why he died on the cross. 
And that's why he rose from the dead to say to us, death no more has power enough. Death has no more power over us. We will rise with him if we walk in faith in him. And so as he says, I love you, he says to you, remain in my love. Let his love speak through your lives. Let this moment be the moment in which you commit yourselves to walk in his love no matter what. Whether it's in, in a career, whether you're in marriage, single life, religious life, all of that still invites you into the love of Jesus Christ. And finally, all of your family gathered here behind you and all your friends have been walking with you these many years. And as they have walked with you, they have also supported you, helped you, guided you, and sometimes given you a little swift kick in the head or the back or whatever. They are here to say to you, as a community of faith, I love you. Brother Ken is here. Brother Mark is here. Your principal is here. Your teachers are here. All of us saying to you, I love you. And remain in his love where Jesus walks with you as you go forth to share the word you have heard. That he's alive, he's risen from the dead, and he's with us now. Give me an amen, otherwise I'm going to keep talking, graduates. Uh, well, I, you know, let's work it. Give me another amen. amen. All right, and then the group behind them. Amen. That all works for me. Okay, let's pray. Hearing the call in a special way of the love of Jesus Christ and to remain in his love. Let's offer now all of our prayers, all of our petitions, asking God to hear and answer each of them. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the desire of its youth be alive and ready to move through the world through the gospel message and help renew the faith of God's people everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people throughout the world to have courage to share their gifts with those who need them. May we be free to shape a future of peace and justice for all and share the truth of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who cannot go to school because of poverty or war, especially those who have suffered in Ukraine, for greater opportunities to learn in a safe and secure environment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the gifts of friendship and community we have found here at Sacred Heart Catholic School. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the acts of kindness shown to us over the years by our parents, pastors, our principal, teachers and staff, and all members of the church and school community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the graduates who will be starting their new chapter, that they continue to be a light of Christ for others through faith, respect, and honor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a few moments of silence, sharing with God all the personal needs we carry in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear all of our prayers 
and help us to remain in the love of Jesus Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory song, Rain Down. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you through the divine work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the good of all his holy church. For the gifts you have bestowed, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, humbly begging that what you have conferred upon us in our unworthiness, we may give back to the glory of your name through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. And by the oblation of his body, 
He brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment. And in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. font of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, your death, O Lord, until For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her now to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Louis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Again to you. Peace to you, peace to you, peace to you, and our Father Alan, peace to you, the girls, peace to you. Let us make the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, keep me safe for eternal. body of Christ. We're going to be letting our graduates receive the body and the blood of Christ first, and then after they have received, then we'll invite the rest of the congregation who wants to receive to come forward in regular fashion, okay?
Our communion song is One Bread, One Body. Please join in singing. Gentile or Jew
Beautiful. Thank you. Let us pray. O God, who have given to us as spiritual food the saving sacrament of your Son, which we have offered you in thanksgiving, grant that being strengthened by gifts of courage and joy, we may serve you more devoutly and be worthy of still further blessings through Christ our Lord. You may be seated. find it in here in just a second. Class of 2022, it has been a true honor and privilege to serve as the principal during your final year at Sacred Heart. I previously shared that the diversity of your class is one of your greatest strengths, and that was on full display when we arrived on Tuesday morning to find your senior prank had a wide variety of elements, <laughs> including a few alarm clocks we probably need to return. There is no doubt that some of you will need a loud, obnoxious mechanical assistant to start your day since your family won't be around to help when you sleep through your alarm clock, phone that is. Your lives are about to change for real as you begin your next adventure. And as I often emphasize, the first thing a person can do to be successful is to show up on time. As a student created timeline was evident on the sidewalk tonight before it rained, um, we entered the school tonight, it reminds us that we are connected to the past. We're only here for a short time, life only moves forward, and our impact will be determined by our choices. As your time at the heart ends, I want to thank you sincerely for your collective efforts and commitment towards excellence. You've embraced one another this year in a spirit of unity that I have rarely witnessed, and you have been a beacon of hope during an especially dark time in our world demonstrated true love for each other, as well as a willingness to forgive. The extraordinary achievements and accolades you received as a class are a testament to who you have become through the loving guidance and support from your family, teachers, coaches, ministers, and friends that consciously made choices to invest in you, as well as your determination. Your high school years were not only impacted by a pandemic, but many social and world issues that have added to the complexity of our times, such as racial conflict, political divide, war in Europe, and widespread addiction to social media. However, it is the grit, the resilience, flexibility, and perseverance that you have been required to develop that will allow you to become the leaders needed to address the issues of tomorrow. Anchored by your faith, knowing that through it all, God has a plan. God has a plan, and he wants to bless you in your endeavors to serve others and to glorify him. His plan is not always our plan. As the Dennis the Menace cartoon on the side of our family fridge growing up attested, if you really want to make God laugh, tell him of your future plans. Instead, it is a constant, ongoing collaboration with him in relationship. Nevertheless, you will be tested in this life, and you will come face to face with doubt. Just this past weekend, however, we witnessed a historic event that I hope will inspire and motivate you as you move forward. In the statistically second largest upset in Kentucky Derby history, Rich Strike was not even supposed to compete. He was 21st in a field of 20, and his owner Richard Dawson learned only 30 seconds before the entry deadline that another horse had scratched, allowing them to enter. He would start in 20th position, 81 to one odds. Dawson had bought Strike for $30,000 in September as compared to the multi-million dollar horses that he was competing against. He had won only a single race, and he had finished no higher than third in his previous five. 
His trainer, Eric Reed, almost walked away from horse racing in 2016 after a fire started by lightning killed 23 of his horses at his equine center. Jockey Sonny Leon had never saddled a horse in the Kentucky Derby. He had never won a high-grade stakes race and stated, I didn't have any idea he could win the Derby, but I had a good feeling with him. Though he thought he could maybe, maybe finish in the top 10, he didn't really expect that he could really do it. Reed shared that when they started training for the race, it was against all odds. When the Derby started, summer is came out of the gate on fire, setting a record for the fastest quarter mile in Derby history at 21.78 seconds. At the half mile mark, Rich Strike was in 18th place, ahead of only two horses. With less than a minute to go, Strike was in 16th place. However, the frantically early pace of the other horses and Rich Strike's positioning near the rail provided him with one ounce of opportunity. After making his move to the right around one of the early leaders, it was as if the sea parted and opened up a clear path down the rail, and with a full tank of gas, Rich Strike appeared to come out of nowhere blazing from 15th to first in the final quarter of a mile. In fact, the announcer for the race only called his name once as he crossed the finish line. Three quarters of a length ahead of Epicenter in second place, one and a half lengths of head of Zandon in second or in third, and an amazing 64 and a half lengths ahead of the early leader, Summer is Tomorrow. We now know that Rich Strike is a closer. He had made late moves in his recent races, taking up passing horses down the stretch, his favorite pastime. What Rich Strike didn't know was that he was a long shot, facing statistically improbability as a last minute entry on a team that had no derby experience while racing against royalty. He was simply focused on his purpose and prepared to race. He had been trained, he had practiced, he had a team that loved and cared for him, and he had a drive to win. And he showed up ready to do his job when the opportunity presented itself. But this isn't just an underdog story, it is a story, a story about preparation, putting in the time and effort and having the heart and soul of a champion. It also is a story about a team with a single dream, utilizing their individual strengths and roles for a victory greater than themselves, for which they will likely be forgotten. Do you remember the owner, trainer, or jockey of Secretariat, any of the other winners of past Kentucky, uh, Kentucky Derby winners, or even Seabiscuits? So what does this mean for you seniors? Dream big, believe, work hard, join a team with complementary skills on the same mission, and don't become discouraged. Instead, act with courage. Seize the day, and to quote singer-songwriter Dan Fogelberg, for what lies ahead, the run for the roses so red. And it's run for the roses as fast as you can. Your fate is delivered, your moment's at hand. It's a chance of a lifetime, and a lifetime of chance. And it's high time that you joined in the dance. Unfortunately, in the past few days, Rich Strike's story has been tarnished. Following victory, Rich Strike was still amped up in race mode and bit the outrider and the pony that came to assist with post-race escort, result in being hit by the outrider in efforts to keep himself and both horses safe, which created controversy. Jockey Sonny Leon has now received a suspension for careless riding in a previous race. So does this overshadow the race? And if so, what does this mean? First, no. The shadow of the race would not exist if the race did not first exist. And this race was absolutely legendary. Second, it only illustrates that we are imperfect. And our actions can and will be interpreted differently by others based upon their experiences and perspectives. Also, even in our finest moments, people will remember how we handled situations and previous actions have the power to impact us later. However, and most importantly, I will leave you with a poem attributed to Mother Teresa that was actually based upon the paradoxical commandments written by Kent Keith when he was a 19-year-old undergraduate at Harvard. He actually wrote these words for high school student leaders in his native Hawaii. However, Mother Teresa revised this poem, placed it on the wall of her children's home in Calcutta, and therefore it is mostly attributed to her. 
though he isn't widely acknowledged as the author of this original piece. His poem has become a huge part of the legacy of Mother Teresa, and therefore the challenge for us is to follow Keith's advice to do it anyway. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, and you will be, seniors, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. But give the world the best that you've got anyway. Because you see in the final analysis, it is never between you and them. It is between you and your God because it never has been between you and them anyway. So class of 2022, we want you to celebrate today. We want you to cherish the memories and try never to let anything steal your joy. We challenge you to carry your light forward to change this world that we live in with courage, love, serve, and please live life to the fullest in connection with the Creator in all that you do. And remember that forever, you will always represent dear old Sacred Heart. Shalom. It is now my pleasure to present to you and introduce our salutatorian this year, Miss Elizabeth Casey. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Casey, and I'm honored to be named the class of 2022 Salutatorian. If you had told shy 12-year-old me that I would be up here speaking in front of all of you, I probably wouldn't have tried so hard. But nonetheless, here I am, grateful to have the honor to speak on behalf of such an incredible class. To start, I want to thank our teachers, faculty, and coaches who have guided us through our time here at Sacred Heart. You each have poured your hearts into each of us in our education. Your unwavering support and mentorship has not gone unnoticed. Ms. Bellapani, Ms. Charles, and Ms. Pittman. You each manage to hold our school and our class together. You've been there for each step of education. Thank you for guiding us throughout the past six years. And Ms. Barbie, for always answering my never ending questions and being our school mom. To Mr. Brackett, in the short time you've known us, you've made the utmost effort to know us, our ideas, and our concerns. I think we are all grateful to have had one last homecoming in the gym and have all loved having our aces this past year especially for the purposes of Solitaire and GameStar. Thank you to our teachers, Ms. Blissett, Ms. Tamberg, Ms. Walls, Ms. McIntyre, and Ms. Britt, to name a few, and to Ms. Wilson for always being there for our students no matter what personal matters occur. Physics and AP Cal are so thankful for you. Next, a thank you to our parents for choosing to send us a sacred heart. I don't think my parents quite knew what they were getting themselves into by sending me to Hattiesburg every day, but I'm so grateful they did. Thank you to every parent for enriching every moment of high school with your dedication and support. I'm so thankful for all the dinners, breakfasts, and parties you have planned for each of us to enjoy. None of us would be here without you all. And finally, thank you to my classmates who made the drive worthwhile. I walked in Sacred Heart not knowing a soul, except for the eight other Laurel kids that walked in with me. Today, I'm leaving surrounded by 48 of my closest friends. Without y'all's sincere support, unpredictable humor, competitive spirit, and amusing nicknames, I would not be the person I am today. Anyone that knows our class would, know, would not be surprised to hear that the past six years have been nothing short of a wild ride. From a field trip bus mishap, numerous locker room antics, two broken windows, and one last Nashus trip, I am proud of the class we have become. A class of leaders, athletes, artists, scholars, and friends. We've experienced a lot as a class. Teachers, coaches, and administrators have come and gone. A worldwide pandemic swept into our sophomore year, and we tragically lost our beloved locker room. But here we are. After difficulties, losses, and conflicts, we've come together as a class, and tonight is our triumph. We've heard it a million times, but Sacred Heart is truly a special place, and I'm so grateful to have such amazing high school memories to look back on. 
whether it be waking up early to attend Miss Angela's Bible study, long drives to Perry County, spending Friday nights crammed together on the gym stage, or some concerning conversations in the Kim group chat. I, <laughs> I have never failed to feel the love within these halls. As some of you may know, I've had the honor to create everyone's senior spotlight post for the senior Instagram this year. And I was not only impressed by everyone's future plans, but happily reminded of all the good memories we've had together. This class is nothing short of awesome. And I'm sure we will go on to have bright futures. As doctors, engineers, nurses, marine and wildlife conservationists, and one massive elementary school teacher. <laughs> but our impressive futures mean so much more when we reflect on what we've done together as a class. Brought the BBC home and broke the streak. Four mock trial state championships, historic volleyball and basketball seasons, one of the first freshmen to make the 30 plus ACT board, back to back golf and tennis state championships, numerous soccer state championships, crowned our football kicker, homecoming queen, and perhaps the most significant, managed to come together as a grade to celebrate our senior year. I'm grateful to say the past six years have made me truly happy at the heart. I'm gonna miss y'all, thank you. And it's my honor to introduce our valedictorian, Christina Danford. Tonight, I'd like to begin with congratulations. To the class of 2022, our past four years have certainly not been easy, but through it all, we made it together. We've graduated from high school, but as the adults behind us know, we've truly only just begun. Our graduation symbolizes our first step, the first of many, into the adult world. Because no individual is self-made, I would like to thank all of the teachers and staff of Sacred Heart for your dedication to the school. As the saying goes, it takes a village. It truly did take the village of Sacred Heart to get us all to this momentous occasion. Thank you to Ms. Barbie for always being such a welcoming face each morning, and to Ms. Pittman for always being so timely with all of my transcripts and with any other tasks that I needed to be completed. To our coaches, Thank you for pushing us on and off the field and closer to becoming our best selves. You've served as mentors to us over the past several years, and we are all grateful for everything that you have done for us. I would also like to recognize a few special people who have helped to mold me into the young woman that stands before you all today. To my parents, thank you all for pushing me towards becoming my best self and for constantly pushing me, especially when I was struggling to push myself and for your many sacrifices. They did not go unnoticed. Whether it was picking up tennis balls in the 35 degree weather as I practiced before a tournament or encouraging me to take the ACT just one more time, you both have played an integral role in my life and I am forever grateful. To my star teacher, Ms. Wilson, you are not just a math teacher, but the heart of the school and you have deeply impacted me in many more ways than one. Thank you for your tireless work ethic each day and for always ensuring that your students learn the necessary skills to succeed. You care about us not just as students, but as people. This past year, your strength and resiliency have served as an inspiration to us all, and I'm certain that God will continue to accomplish many great things through you. And lastly, to Ms. McIntyre, your class was certainly the most difficult class that I've ever taken, but it pushed me outside of my comfort zone and allowed me to grow both as a student and as a person. Thank you for going above and beyond each day, and I'm so grateful and honored to have been a member of your final class here at Sacred Heart. Well, our high school experience was certainly fraught with unprecedented challenges as our grade and our school were forced to constantly adapt to the ever-evolving world, suffering under the burden of COVID-19. I never could have imagined finishing the last nine weeks of my 10th grade year in my room behind my computer screen, and I never could have imagined spending my entire junior year wearing a mask and constantly wondering if I or one of my friends were to become the next victim of the school's quarantine list. 
it. While our four years spent here were certainly unlike anything our parents or our grandparents experienced, those uncertain times that we spent together allowed a class that was already close grow just that much closer together, and they allowed our senior year to be our best year yet. From cheering our football team on to its winning a season with, by far, the greatest student section in the state of Mississippi, to winning our third consecutive tennis state championship with a team that now feels like family. Caroline, we couldn't have done it without that amazing smash overhead at the end. I will, cherry this, I will cherish the memories that I have made here with me at Sacred Heart for years to come. As we leave our Sacred Heart family to either begin work or attend college, either a few miles or maybe even a thousand miles away, we all are going to be faced with both obstacles and opportunities. Legendary Vince Lombardi once said, the only place that success comes before work is in the dictionary. I believe that Lombardi's statement is entirely true. Striving for success, working hard, and sacrifice are crucial in today's world. As we move forward to our various colleges and universities, we are all are going to experience failure, not just once, but many times, on our journey to becoming our best selves. But as I've learned over the past several years, it's not our failures that define us, but rather our response to those failures that ultimately determines your growth. Standing at this podium allows me the opportunity to speak to you all about what is most important to me, and that is the value of service. Since I was young, my father, who is an Air Force colonel, has always reiterated to me the Air Force motto, and that is integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all that we do. And while I won't be attending the Air Force Academy, go Navy, beat Air Force, Army, and everyone else for that matter, that statement has been what I've strived to live by for as long as I can remember. And while all aspects of that motto have always resonated with me, service before self struck me just that much more. As many of you know, I will be attending the United States Naval Academy, ultimately serving our great nation as a member of our armed forces. I believe that God's purpose for us is to serve our fellow man as that is what he commanded us to do in the scriptures. Galatians 5 reads, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. While doing the military is one form of service, opportunities for service are everywhere around us. Whether it be through the church, a local charity, or simply by offering someone a helping hand, I challenge each member of the class of 2022 to become a difference maker someone capable of forming a positive, lasting impact on someone else's life. I challenge you all to become difference makers by leaving a legacy of love through a lifetime of service. I leave Sacred Heart believing that having a purpose, working hard, never quitting, and serving others are what truly matter in this world. I plan to have a purpose, work hard, serve others, and never quit to the best of my ability, and I hope that you all do as well. Today, I want to encourage you all to think about service as not something you have to do, but as an opportunity to impact the lives of others for the better. Through service, we fully discover and live the Sacred Heart way of faith, respect, and honor. Through service, we build community in a stronger country that comes closer to the vision of the Founding Fathers who helped held the virtues of faith and service. To end, I'm going to leave you all with the hallowed words of President John F. Kennedy. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I'm going to add, and for each other. That is my challenge to the class of 2022. Thank you. At this time, I would like to invite our class president, Brady Stafford, to come to the podium.
The tradition of a class gift to the school is the opportunity for each graduating class to leave a legacy for future Sacred Heart students. Our class has chosen to provide funding to wrap the school bus so it will always be recognized as the Sacred Heart school bus. Mr. Brackett, on behalf of, class of the class of 2022, I present you this check to make our gift to the school possible. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Pittman. As the school counselor, I've had the pleasure of working with this graduating class this year. I speak on behalf of all faculty members and staff in saying that we are extremely proud of the performance of this remarkable group of young men and women. This year's senior class of 48 students has been offered a total of $5 million in scholarships, which averages $104,000 per senior. While maintaining their academic status, these seniors have participated in numerous extracurricular and athletic activities. 33 graduates have been awarded medallions from the Mississippi Economic Council as Mississippi Scholars by achieving requirements in the areas of curriculum, ACT, GPA, attendance, discipline, and community service. Nine members of the class have qualified as Mississippi Eminent Scholars by scoring a 29 or above on the ACT. While maintaining their academic status, these seniors have participated in extracurricular activities, academic and athletic competitions, and community service throughout their time at Sacred Heart. Dr. Clark and Mr. Brackett, the class of 2022 has met all the requirements of the state of Mississippi and Sacred Heart Catholic High School. They are now ready to receive their diplomas. At this time, I would like to ask Mr. Brackett, our principal, and Dr. Clark, our superintendent, to join Bishop Kinneman and Father Ken on the altar for the presentation of diplomas. Will the first row please stand? Graduating with special honors and attending Mississippi State University, David, Alejandro, and Zola. <laughs> Graduating with honors and attending Alcorn State University, Layla Simone Barnes. Graduating with special honors and attending the University of Georgia, Caroline Townsend Batson. <laughs> attending William Carey University, Callister Goddard Ball. Graduating with special honors and attending Belmont University, Melissa Isabel Verdeon. <laughs> attending Pearl River Community College, Rachel Ann Bergen.
graduating with honors and attending Jones College, Ryan Hunter Bowyer. Attending the University of Mississippi, Travis Walter Bolster. <laughs> Graduating with honors and attending Mississippi State University, Kaysen Isaiah Bourne Noble. Attending the University of Mississippi, Anthony Lee Boyette. <laughs> Graduating with honors and entering the workforce, Mary Hudson Breeden. Graduating as salutatorian with special honors and attending Auburn University, Elizabeth Ann Casey. <laughs> Graduating as valedictorian with special honors and attending the United States Naval Academy, Christina Nicole Danford. Attending Pearl River Community College, Jordan Tyler Brown. <laughs> Attending the University of Mississippi, Anna Weston Burks. Graduating with special honors and attending the University of Mississippi, Leonard Bo Busby V. <laughs> attending Pearl River Community College, Eric Paul Coulter. Graduating with honors and attending the University of South Carolina, Graciela Andrea Falla. <laughs> attending Jones College, Zachary David Fontes. Graduating with special honors and attending the University of Mississippi, Logan James Gallagher. <laughs> Joining the United States Army, Aaron Michael Gooday. Graduating with honors and attending William Carey University, Mallory Ann Gilbertson. <laughs> Graduating with special honors and attending the University of Southern Mississippi, Alexandria Brooke Green. Attending the University of the South, Jillian Delaney Hall.
attending William Carey University, Isaiah David Hamilton. <laughs> Graduating with honors and attending the University of South Alabama, Madeline Grace Hasselbrink. <laughs> Attending the University of Southern Mississippi, Haley Bell Gerald. <laughs> Graduating with honors and attending Mississippi State University, Isabel Claire Killen. Attending Hatfields Cosmetology School, Audrey Catherine Marsh. <laughs> Attending Mississippi State University, Jane Tess McIntyre. Joining the United States Army, Abelardo Flores Mejia. <laughs> Attending the University of Mississippi, Ella Clark Beatty Mercier. Attending the University of Mississippi, James Christopher Moore II. <laughs> Graduating with special honors and attending Hendricks College, Jake Cabot Nurkin. Attending Pearl River Community College, Tamaya Armani Page. <laughs> Attending the University of South Alabama, Katherine Grace Palmer. Attending Millsaps College, Nicholas Dean Pipkins. <laughs> Graduating with honors and attending the University of Mississippi, Jack Curry Posey. Attending Pearl River Community College, John Cleveland Royals. <laughs> Attending the University of Southern Mississippi, Alexis Ann Saffel. Graduating with honors and attending the University of Southern Mississippi, Reagan Elizabeth Smith. <laughs> Graduating with special honors and attending the U.S. Naval Academy, Charles Brady Stafford. <laughs> Graduating with honors and attending the University of Mississippi, Marina Trejo. <laughs> A 
attending Pearl River Community College, Sydney Maria Trahulis. <laughs> Graduating with honors and attending Mississippi State University, Luke Jacob Wiest. <laughs> Graduating with special honors and attending Spring Hill College, Ella Hudson Willoughby. <laughs> Graduating with honors and attending Mississippi State University, Yosfeli Elise Zerbino. All right, class of 2022, will you please rise? Ladies and gentlemen, we present the Sacred Heart Catholic High School graduating class of 2022. Students, you may turn your tassels. sing the alma mater have the final blessing and sing the closing song so please remain standing for the recessional during the closing song There we go. Okay, congratulations to all of you. Well done. And to your families, congratulations to the faculty and staff. Mr. Brackett, appreciate you very much, uh, all of you. Father Ken, by the way, 
This is his 17th graduation class. So let's give him a hand. You're getting younger. <laughs> let's pray. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Please join in our sending forth song, Lead Me, Lord. Somebody did. 